Yesterday, we added two fields to our person class, the first name and last name, and they are to keep track of a person object's first name and last name. As it is right now, they are private. They are contained within the person class, and they cannot be accessed outside of the class. Now, we want this information to be available outside of the class because there might be times that we want to refer to a person object's first name or last name or both. So we need some way to make this information available. And one way we can do that is to change private to public. But we never, ever, ever want to do that with a field because this gives complete control to whatever is using our person class. Not only can it get that value, but it can set a value there as well. And we don't want that. You know, there are some times that we will want some values to change outside of the class, but this is not one of those times. So we need some way to access these private values outside of the class. And this is where properties come in. Properties give us the control over the data within our class. We can allow certain access to the first name and last name properties to get that information, but then we can also deny the ability to set new information to those fields, which is really desired because once a person has a first name and a last name, we really don't want to change it. Now, of course, there are times when that is done, but we aren't going to write that ability. So to create a property, and we are going to create a property for the first name and last name fields, we start off kind of like a method. We have the accessibility modifier, public in this case. We could have private if we wanted to, but private isn't going to help us because Private is not accessible outside of the class. Internal would be something useful, at least inside of this project, but we want first name and last name properties to be accessible to all because, you know, the person class is available to anyone that wants to use it. And the first name and last name properties need to be that as well. That just kind of makes sense. So we're going to start with the accessibility modifier, and then properties can return a value, or they need to have a data type. So the first name and last name are strings, so our properties are going to be strings, and then we need the name of our property. And we are using Pascal case here because these are public, and as I said yesterday, whenever we wrote the say hello method, public members, and that's properties and methods, public members need to follow the uh, Pascal casing convention. Now, things are going to get different from a method. Instead of having a parameter list, we have a code block. And then inside of the code block, we have accessors. And we have two accessors. We have get, get, and then we have set. The get accessor is used when something wants to retrieve information. So if we wrote some code, let's open up program.cs. If we wrote code like first name, or let's do this string first name equals person dot first name, that is getting information. That's getting the value of first name. So that's what the get accessor is for. And all we really want to do there is return the value of first name. Pretty easy. So if we were to run this code, and we will, let's do console.writeline first name. And when we run this, we will see John. Fantastic. Now with the set accessor, we can set a new value, not only for first name, but we can do basically anything inside of set. And in fact, we can do anything inside of get. These are kind of little mini methods, if you will. They are very limited methods, but you could write any type of logic inside of the getter or the setter accessor, and it's going to be fine. Any time that the get or the set would execute, the logic inside of those code blocks would execute. So we could do, you know, if we wanted to, which we don't, we could do last name 
equals value. In the case of setting, there is a special parameter called value. Now it's not specified anywhere. This is just one of the things that's done for us. Value refers to the value that is being set. So if we were to set a value, let's get rid of this line and let's do person dot first name equals I just changed your last name. Well, we don't have a way to get at the last name yet. But anyway, if we the way that this is written now, whatever we assigned to the first name property, as we have done with line 18, it would get set to last name. So in order to see that, let's go ahead and write our last name property. And we are just going to do a get, get last name. Notice that there's no set accessor. And by omitting set, we have made the last name property read only. Now, the last name field is getting written to in our setter for the first name property. So it's not 100% secure, but I did that on purpose so that we could just see how this works. So let's change this to person.lastname because by setting a value to first name, we have changed last name. Let's run it and we will see I just changed your last name. So this is obviously something that we don't want to do. So we will get rid of the setter for first name we will go back and then we get a red squiggly because first name is read only. It cannot be assigned to. So now we have protected our first name and last name values while still making those values available outside of the class. That's great and all, but there's got to be a better way to do this. I mean, because this is several lines of code just to make data available and protect it at the same time. Now, this is how we had to write code in .NET 2 and below. I don't remember when exactly it changed. It changed in either .NET 3 or 3.5, but there was a new feature added to one of those versions that allowed us to basically get rid of all this code and do it all in one statement. What I'm about to show you is really only helpful in this particular case. We have just a first name and last name, and we are just simply returning those values. We're not doing any type of calculations or anything like that. In the case of you know, more complex properties, we would want to have the field and then the property. But since, you know, we're not doing really anything special, we want to get rid of everything here. So let's delete all of this. And we are going to use a feature called automatic properties. It's a shorthand to create a property. And what it does is it creates the property and it creates the field behind the property. It creates the field for us, but we never see it. In fact, we can never uh, access that backing field within our code. We use it through our property. So we declare it kind of like we did before. We have the public, then the return type, and then the name of the property, except it's first name, not fist name. We have the code block, but inside of the code block, we just simply put get and set. We don't have to get and then return a value. We don't have to set a value. Just the get and set will automatically create everything needed to get a value for first name and set a new value for first name. Now, we don't want to set anything, remember. We just want to get because we want to protect the first name whenever it's being used outside of the class. So we will get rid of set. And now, since first name begins with an uppercase letter, we don't have to use this anymore. We can just do first name equals the parameter first name. But uh-oh, we are getting a red squiggly because our first name property is read only. We have only specified get here, but this is one of the really cool things that we can do. We can use an accessibility modifier on these get or sets. So we can do private set. And this will say that, okay, the first name property is publicly gettable. Anything can get its value, but it can only be set inside of the person class. It's privately set. So now our red squiggly goes away for first name. And all we have to do for last name is copy and paste, get rid of first, replace it with last. 
And there we go. We have made our code a lot easier to read, in my opinion, a lot less typing, and we still get the same results. The first name and last name can be get, but it cannot be set outside of the class. So let's go back to program.cs, and let's do person, first name. Let's concatenate if I can get the right keystroke. There we go. And then person dot last name. Let's run this and there we go. John Doe. We can write properties even easier. Now the end result is the same, but we end up using a feature of Visual Studio called snippets. And it's just a few keystrokes followed by tab tab and it will automatically create a placeholder um, set of code for us. So for these shortened properties, the snippet is PROP, prop. Then press tab tab and it will give us some code. Now we have two fields within this snippet code that we can change. One is already highlighted for us, the int. This is the return type, so we can just start typing string. And then by pressing tab tab, It'll go to the next field, the name of the property, and it automatically defaults to my property, but we can set it to whatever. Uh, we have a first name and last name. Let's do middle name. And then whenever we are done, we can just press enter, and then we have a property automatically done. All we had to do is use the snippet and then make a few changes and there we go. Now of course we do have to do the private set but now we have a first name, a middle name, and last name. But uh, we're going to get rid of the middle name because we don't need it. So that is basically it for properties. These were very simple properties. Properties can get very complex, especially if you're needing to do a lot of calculations and, or a lot of validation with um, getting or setting information through a property. But that capability is there, and they are a very nice feature of the C-sharp language. So tomorrow we are going to look at overloads, which is another good feature of the C-sharp language. But it's not just C-sharp. Uh, many object-oriented programming languages have uh, method overloading. So we will look at that tomorrow. Have a good one.